welcome back to my channel. This video today is intended to be a follow-up to the live stream I did where I talked about the book Norlam. I wanted to do a follow-up because um, I didn't give it a fair shake all the way in terms of, I said some negative things about it, but uh, I didn't bring in the what could be done to improve it uh, with those negative things. So that's, that's one missed detail there. And I don't think that's very fair. So even though the negative things still stand, if I could clarify them or add uh, what could be done instead, first, please go back if you want to and check out uh, the, the actual review part of that, that live stream that had Norlam in it. I think the, uh, <clears throat> the thumbnail for it is a uh, Zippo type lighter and it's yellow on black, if that makes it easier to find. So without rehashing the whole story, um, one of the, the things that bothered me was the syringe. So our main character, Coleman, is his name, Col I, now I'm screwing up the last name, but yeah, Coleman's his first name. So he comes in from his night, oops, I'm flipping too far ahead, there we go, it's just the opening. He comes in from his night, he doesn't join the party, he has work to do, but, he's in, but he lives next door, or he's in a room where this is the common area, or whatever rental situation he's in, and somebody finds a dead guy on the toilet, alright, and then, let's see, Oh, and I'm going to acknowledge how, hopefully, if I remember, I do have a list in front of me, how difficult this is uh, to uh, to write this kind of a scene. And what do I mean by that? So anyway, Coleman is looking at the cops. The, the cops are basically racists. And that's the whole purpose of this scene, is to bring out the racism as an aspect of, of uh, the, the setting. The detectives who are looking into this death, uh, there's a new one, Baldwin, and his, that's up here, and then his supervisors and whatnot, and where Baldwin and Coleman start talking about this particular death, let's see, it's over here, and we get a little bit of a flashback, there. So the way the death is alleged to have occurred requires several assumptions. Coleman uh, is being shown in this scene to be very intelligent by making those assumptions putting together what would have happened, because he he is familiar enough with the guy who died to know he's not a druggie. I think what's being played on here, if these stereotypes existed back then, and uh, is that along with jazz, marijuana was a black thing, uh, and then, th so that's a stereotype, but then so was heroin. I think that stereotype for heroin existed back in this era, The either this was the 20s or the 40s. So... But along, but along with the, the jazz music. And what Coleman is alleging through a series of assumptions is that the needle must have, or sorry, the syringe, notice it's shown here, a little plastic plunger on it with the, the cross shape uh, there. And then, maybe you can't see the detail, but it this really looks more like something more modern. I don't know if this would have been produced back then, but still, it's being stored with the needle out, no cover on it, falling out of the cabinet being... Uh, being knocked out by the sound of the music from the the room next door. Okay, that there's something reasonable about all this, and then it'd have to get deep enough into the leg to actually uh, allow for injection into a vein. It'd have to hit a vein, and then he'd have he'd have to being surprised by the needle hitting him, it, hit it very precisely to be shoved in and give himself an air embolism in a vein, not just anywhere randomly in his leg tissue. So, assuming that it was stored in, inappropriately, assuming that it was stored with the plunger pulled back, which is also not how these are generally stored, uh, and yeah, this is this is very strange. <laughs> so, um, maybe if you could claim this was made of metal, but why would it perfectly come down tip first? There's a lot of assumption going on there, all of which is in Coleman's head to clear the name in his mind of this guy who was not a drug user in the first place. Now the difficult, um, what I want to acknowledge is with all these problems in in this, the function is to show Coleman as, as intelligent and to bring out a bit of racism in the setting of the story. This is way too many assumptions upon assumptions in order to come to this. And that's not really intelligent so much as this really isn't how things work in the first place. Storing it incorrectly in two different ways and I, I don't mean incorrectly according to standards, I just mean who does this? You'd have to assume it had no cover on the needle. Maybe they didn't back then. You'd have to assume somebody pulled the plunger out. Well, that's weird. If if you're repeatedly using your, your needle for, I don't know, your diabetes or whatever, and you push the plunger in, 
why would you pull it back out and fill the tube with air afterwards and then store it? Are you letting it dry? Are you, unless, you, like, this doesn't make any sense at all on its own. All right, so how could it be done better? You just need a different mechanism of death, a di some other kind of way for a guy to accidentally die in order to, uh, to have the racism of the police officers come out to show the setting that's going on. And that's the difficulty in writing this is because this doesn't work, you essentially have to rewrite so much, like him coming home to a party going on. That all has to change, you know. Meanwhile, looking at him coming home to the party, this all looks really cool and was drawn very well. <laughs> so I, I would hate to have to sacrifice all this, you know, uh, with the music in the air and whatnot. So that's, that's not good. So how do you make this better is actually a pretty Herculean feat. All right, so let's see what else we got. Um, oh yeah, and so, and so I do feel for Joshua in, in, that, uh, in that respect. Oh yeah, showing likability with the kids. Much later in the, in the book, we get to see uh, Coleman interacting with kids at his, uh, where he, he teaches or tutors. A lot of this book is at night, uh, which makes sense. It's a murder mystery type thing. And when he interacts with the kids, I gotta keep a finger there. Let me just see if I can find one. Um, here he's interacting a lot with Baldwin, our white detective. Do, 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 do. Okay, this is not it. But when he interacts with, with kids, oh, there we go, coming and going in, uh, from his class, he's actually shown to be a pretty level headed, reasonable guy. Strict teacher, you know, but strict with a purpose. So it's, he's actually a a really good character in that regard. Uh, where I think the reader misses out on him being likable at all is his constant downgrade, talk down to the white guy type um, type treatment of Coleman. And let's see. Uh, oh yeah, okay. I'll just double check my notes. If he could show a little more respect for Coleman, it would make sense in the story because early on, or sorry, for Baldwin, early on with this conversation, Baldwin needs to have the racism of his, uh, pointed out to him in some regards, and Baldwin already agrees that his de his fellow detectives and sergeants and whoever are out of line and being jerks and, and all that. So for Coleman to keep giving a lot of attitude to Baldwin as some empty-headed idiot doesn't make a lot of sense. He should be saying, hey, I have a peer here, and then Baldwin himself has written in such a way that it doesn't even make sense that he's a detective in the first place. Um, he's, he's just kind of being used as a prop at times. So how could this be done better? One, give Baldwin a little more intelligence instead, instead of him be, being just an empty vessel to say, what's going on? Help me out. You know, I don't understand. Instead of that kind of attitude. And then two, to make the audience see Mr. Col or Coleman here as more likable, which I think would really improve things, have him show respect for uh, the improved Bald Baldwin. So Baldwin, in order to make Col Coleman likable, Baldwin needs to be rewritten a little bit to, you know, bring him up a little bit. So uh, there we go. Baldwin, I have notes here. Bald uh, Coleman being less hard on Baldwin. Heavy attitude removes Coleman from being someone the reader would want to like. Okay, yeah. And then, because uh, I just said all that. And then, uh, uh, by the way, I really don't want to edit these. That's sort of been an inhibition of me getting my stuff recorded is I don't want to edit. Uh, let's see. What I see happening here is, it, in the way it is written, is Coleman is being painted as just as much of a racist uh, by his treatment of Baldwin and his attitude towards Baldwin, uh, extending to Baldwin inappropriately his reaction to the uh, the other sergeants who themselves are racist. So this would go. Um, I think you'd you'd get that message out a lot better if we had better reason to like Coleman and not think of him as just as racist as everybody else. So there's that. All right, so the book needs, and I wrote this down, the book needs to be one thing solidly before doing another. All right, what do I mean by that? If, races, if the racism aspect is too heavy, then the book is no longer a detective noir story. So it needs to be a detective, a detective noir story here before it's a, a hey, racism sucks example kind of story. In that sense, you have your main objective and your accessory. Well, which one is which? And if, you're, if your accessory is racism is part of the setting, and so you might use it as a, as a theme, if that becomes so loud that it stops being a detec detective noir story, 
and that's now the accessory, you switch places and it's really not interesting, that's where you get into political preaching. But if you can have a detective noir story, and hey, this took time in a place where this really is the setting, and racism is terrible, and we can use that with our characters, fine, don't sacrifice the detective noir story, because that's what I want to buy and read. I don't need to be preached at for stuff I already, especially stuff I already agree with. So, there you go. All right, let's see. Um, oh, yeah, something I did not look at in this book, by the end of it, because in other words, I haven't done my homework, when we're being shown uh, how the mystery puts together, or gets put together, uh, could we as a reader have solved it ourselves before being shown to us? I don't know. Uh, now, I, when I first read this book, I read it in about five or six different sittings, which is a lot, and breaking a book up like that, uh, especially a book that is really only three chapters. So f for me, I haven't gone back and reread it to see if all the clues were there in the first place. So I'm saying this not as a criticism, more of a just in case. If we're going to write a mystery, give make sure there's enough there so that the reader can say, oh, okay, I should have guessed this. Instead of, uh, now I know the reaction I had at the very end was, oh, hey, yeah, that, that does make sense. Um, as far as uh, we were shown certain things, okay, I remember us being in this area before. Uh, but could I have put it together myself? I don't know. Like, I'm sorry. For my own skills, that's a separate issue. <laughs> but did we have all the information to put it together ourselves, only it was a little bit sneaky here and there? That's the way it really should be. And I don't know if this book did that or not, because I haven't gone back uh, to do my homework and find out if it did. Uh, so, let's see. Oh, yeah, and I've already talked enough in my live stream about uh, the gun, because the gun that's involved was a revolver, and they keep finding uh, uh, shell casings for it. Nobody using a revolver to commit murder is going to dump their shell casings out of the revolver. At the, that's, that's how a semi-auto works. <laughs> so another thing that could be done to improve would be uh, to learn a little bit more about guns. And then how does that... That becomes a, another Herculean task. Because if finding shell casings is a big part of how the, the murder gets solved and how the story progresses, and you can't... You, you don't have a semi-auto in this time period or you want them to have a revolver, well, you know, things have got to be moved around there. So how do you improve it? Uh, find a different uh, trail of clues, something other than shell casings. <laughs> because who's going to go commit a murder and then and then pop out to the side the, the cylinder that holds the bullets and then dump them out at the murder site? Like, what? Wh or dump out the casings? Like, oh my gosh. Anyway, so that's it. The thing is, uh, I, I am what I want to do. <laughs> this is weird to say. So I had all these problems with the book, but I see how it could be improved. And I know that he's supposed to be likable because I could see Coleman with the kids, and I just think it'd be better written to show a little bit of that likability to Baldwin because he really shouldn't have anything against Baldwin. All right. And I'm curious, I'm really curious where this is going to go. So I'm, I'm, I know I'm changing my mind a little bit, but I do want to see if there's a Norlum 2. I want to see what's going to happen next. So if this wasn't just a goofy tease at the end with to be continued, uh, because this is sort of, a, to me, this looks like an old comic book motif. Uh, if Josh really is putting out a New Orleans 2, I want to read it. And I don't know if he would ever hear my critique uh, and, you know, put it into action or not, but uh, if he improves, great. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. That's my follow-up to my noir alum because I don't think I gave it a fair shake by saying, hey, how could things be improved? I hope this was useful, to you, uh, useful for anyone uh, looking at it. Have a good night.